Joining us now, the host of The Next Revolution on the Fox News Channel, former advisor to British Prime Minister David Cameron, Steve Hilton, joining the conversation and, along with Dagan in New York. Steve, great to see you. It's so great to be here, Marie. And here you are in my hometown, <laughs> no. well, the heart of liberal America. Yeah, you're you, here. At every night you're talking about what's happening in terms of the agenda and yes. across the world, across the country certainly. Your thoughts on the president's agenda? Well, I think the most important thing is what it sounds like they're hoping to do, which is to focus on the agenda. You've got all this talk about his fitness for office. We, we spoke about it on our show last night. You know, it's just the latest in, in the attempt of the elite and the establishment to basically overturn yeah. the result of an election they just couldn't believe in 2016. They couldn't believe that the people finally had had enough of the failed policies, the failed elitist policies that had made the rich richer, but half the country poorer, jobs gone down, wages stagnant for so many years. They, the people put someone in the Oval Office to turn that around, and they still can't cope with it. They tried with the Russia thing. Now this is the latest effort. They want to get him out. They can't stand the fact that he won. It's just like in the UK, actually. I was just back in the UK over the holidays visit, visiting family. It, the same thing is going on there about the 2016 Brexit vote. They're literally talking about a second referendum because people got the wrong answer last time. Yeah. And, and, the, and the best answer to all of this is to actually deliver real results for the people who voted for the president. That's what's happening already. You can see it with wages going up, the job numbers, the tax bill will make a huge impact. We've right. talked about that over the past. Substance is the answer to all of this. Well, you're absolutely right. And, you know, when you look at what has taken place already, I mean, you've got three quarters of 3% GDP, which is we're expecting the third quarter, uh, uh, a third quarter of GDP of 3%. And now estimates are calling for 4% economic growth, 4% in 2018. But part of this not talking about the agenda Agenda also falls to President Trump. And doesn't it dig in? Because the truth is, is that, you know, when CNN puts all these non-doctors on their set and starts speculating about President Trump's mental health and they have no credibility to do so, they're not even doctors, medical doctors, the president tweets about it. And so he's keeping it alive, even though what's more important to the American people are talking about that 3% growth, talking about jobs, mm -hmm. and by the way, talking about what he's done in foreign policy, which is equally as stunning. And I fault him for tweeting about the stock market so much, saying that when the stock market eventually turns down, and it will some, at some point, he will own it. However, he is reminding people that's a barometer of economic success. And I'll point to these naysayers. People who are rooting for the president to fail are rooting for this country to fail. They are rooting for a, a bad economy. They are rooting for people's wages to go down. That's, what, that's ultimately what they're rooting for when they want the man in the White House to fail. And I'll point to after the jobs number on Friday. I was appalled where you started getting these comparisons year over year, again, seventh year in a row that we've had more than two million jobs created. But everybody fixated on the left that the number of jobs created in 2017 was down 8 percent from the prior year. Down 8 yeah. percent and the world is going to hell in a handbasket. That was the Incredible. reaction online. And it's appalling. But you know what? It's getting harder and harder to ignore. I mean, how many companies have now paid out bonuses? How many companies, Steve, have said, okay, we're getting a better situation as a result of the tax deal, so I'm going to be giving $1,000 checks to all of my employees? I mean, the mainstream media can try hard to ignore the success that this president yep. has achieved in terms of the economy and in terms of, uh, look, foreign policy, ISIS. He gave the control back to the generals on the ground. ISIS is being defeated now. We weren't talking about this a year ago. Look what's happening in Iran. People are feeling empowered uh, after, you know, the, the alliance that he really secured with the, with the incoming uh, uh, king of, of Saudi Arabia and the current king of Saudi Arabia. Exactly. And, and also look at Syria. Look at the way that you finally had a tough response to what was going on there after all those years of basically standing by and doing nothing right. and allowing this situation to fester, causing the refugee crisis in Europe. I mean, example after example of And let's real... not forget North Korea and South exactly. Korea are going to be talking for the first time in 20 years. He's been talking tough to North Korea. You can't ignore this stuff forever. That's right. And just to your earlier point, though, about, about um, encouraging it, I think there is one thing that's important for our, for our audience to understand, which is that the, 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 this book that's where I brought all these accusations of mental... Fire and fury. Uh, to, ...to the fore, 
the, the, the story there is not about this author believing that the president has these problems. It's actually the people around the president saying this stuff. And one of the things I'm concerned about is that for too long, he, amongst the group of advisors around him, the people close to him, you've got people who are too self-serving, yeah. too focused on their own agendas, not just Steve Bannon. The president himself said that. There are others too. And you don't have enough of that sense of real team loyalty mm behind his agenda. Well, that's one thing that we did learn from the book, that there was chaos at the beginning of this yes. administration, which is no surprise. You've got a person coming in who has never been president before. Obviously, there wasn't the structure that he required and needed, but that certainly came out in the book as if it just happened yesterday.